Lord. Well, we continue this Sunday. As you all know that this month of May 2020, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching about new things. And you know, uh, God says, I will do a new thing. And today is part three. That is what God himself says. I will do a new thing. May new things be our portion in name. Well, in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19, the Bible says that is God himself who is uh, uh, speaking to us. God says, remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now, new things are the doing of the Lord. Because God said, I will do. So it is God who promises to do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. <clears throat> now listen, 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 listen. God say what? I will make a way in the wilderness. Are you getting me? Now, anytime you go through a wilderness season, Spiritually speaking, it means you are in your season of new things. Anytime you notice a wilderness in your life, it is a preparation for new things. Wilderness is a desert. Wilderness is dryness. And you know, Jesus started his ministry from the wilderness, the desert. Now, God says, I will make a way in the wilderness. Now, to all of our wilderness, there is a way. And I want to let you know, no matter true in your family in your house whatever wilderness you can be go, go, going through whichever whichever desert you can find yourself in there is a way and God will make a way every new thing starts from the wilderness wilderness is when you get out of your comfort zone it is wilderness and God said, I will make a way and it will spring forth and it will be a new thing. There is a moment where you can go through a wilderness even in your relationship. A wilderness in a relationship can happen. So, it is good to see it as a way for new things that need to spring forth in your life. That is what God is telling us this month of May. I believe that we are memorizing that scripture. Remember not the former thing. Now, can you forget the old things? Why are you still in the past? Why are you still in the old things? May you receive grace to move to the new things. Because you know what? Unless you get rid of the old, you cannot get hold of the new. Unless you get rid of the old, you cannot get hold of the new. Unless you get rid, take note, 
unless you get rid of the old, you cannot get hold of the new. You cannot start a new chapter if you are still in the old chapter. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. May you be free from the memories of the past. May you be free from any painful memory. Ah, he did this to me. He did this to me. He said this to me. He said what to me. He, he, he left me. He abandoned me with my children. He went to another woman. See what? See what? Ah, Abba. Remember not the former things. May you receive that grace today in Jesus' precious name. Now, today I want to talk to you about a new topic, but still in the new things. We go that is the theme of the mouth. And I want to talk about a story and Please uh, be careful. Give me your attention. Because the story I want to talk about, you know about that story. The story of Mary and Angel Gabriel. Now, let's go to the Bible. And we will get some few stuff. We will get strong teachings. If after this teaching your life does not change, I don't know. Something must be wrong with you. Now, let us go to our Bible and I will post it on the screen. The Bible says, we start from Luke chapter 1 verse 28. And the angel came in unto her meaning he came in unto Mary and said, Hail! He said what? Hail! All of us we know. All of us we know. We have been Hail Mary! I mean, that is where it, where it starts. Hail! Thou! That art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed among women. Mm. Verse 29. And when she saw him, she was troubled at him. Now, let me go back to you on the screen. Maybe you are not getting me well. Because already the, the anointing is, is, is growing up. Now, the Bible says, when Mary saw the angel, Agnes, see here, she was troubled at his saying. She was not troubled at what she saw. She was troubled by what she had. No, I, I mean, not but what she saw, but but what she had. And I will explain to you why was she troubled by what she had. Listen, be careful. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. So she was troubled by the manner of salutation. No, I mean, I believe the angel was smart. I believe the angel was 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 uh, uh, handsome. But the handsomeness of the angel did not influence her. She was troubled at what she had. Verse thirty. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found 
favor with God. I want to announce to somebody, your time of favor has finally come in Jesus' name. Amen. I say your time of favor has come in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. I want to tell somebody you will conceive in your womb in Jesus' name. You will conceive. You will conceive. Hallelujah. Is somebody listening to me today? I will conceive. Ah, Abba. Agne. <laughs> and listen to me carefully the angel says you shall conceive and you will give birth now it means your conception will go until the end you shall conceive and you will give birth I want to tell somebody today under the sound of my voice this time round, you shall conceive and you will give birth. Meaning, in other words, there will be no miscarriage. You know, no, you, are, <laughs> you are not getting what I'm talking about. The angel came to tell Mary, you shall conceive. You will have a plan. You will have a thought. You will have an idea. You will have a bar. You will have a project. It will go until the end. It will not stop in the middle. You will have your son. You will hold your baby. I want to prophesy. If you care to listen to the word of God today, you will hold your baby in Jesus' name. The, the, I mean, the angel say, you shall conceive and we give birth. You, you know, conceiving does not mean that we give birth. To have a project does not mean that it will go until the end. How many people start a project but it stops somewhere? You started the year, you started the year 2020. How many projects you say? I will be the head, not the chair. 2020. I will, I will, I will. We are in May. Now, you will say, anti Corona. No, don't accuse Corona. Corona has nothing to do with you. <laughs> no. I mean, don't accuse Corona. You shall conceive and you shall give birth. You shall conceive and you shall give birth. You shall conceive and you shall give birth. I want somebody to say after me, I shall conceive and I shall give birth. I shall conceive and I shall give birth. So no more miscarriage in your life. started my teaching but I feel already excited by what the angel Agnes are you as excited as I am you shall conceive you will give back you will start that project it will go now I want to speak to somebody you are that kind when you start something it finishes it stops in the middle today as a man of God I'm declaring the last miscarriage you experience is the last ever in your life. Amen. You shall conceive Amen. and you will give birth. You shall conceive and you will give birth. You shall conceive and you will give birth. You shall conceive and you will give birth. Go back to the scripture. Okay? Well. <laughs> you shall Abba, Agnes, I think I'm another one. You shall conceive. So it means no day Abba, 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 Abba. Let me let me go back to you. No devil will stop your pregnancy again. No devil under heaven. If 
you care to believe in a man of God, you believe in the word I'm preaching today, no devil will stop your pregnancy again. The project you start, you will give birth. Don't than God. Don't give your uncle at your husband, at your wife, at your boss. See, you who nobody will stop what God has started for you. Paul says, I know he who has started this good project will bring it until the end. Whatever God has started will go until the end. It will not stop. That devil will always stop your friendship. God gives you a good relationship. Somehow somebody comes in between to stop you. I rebuke that devil today. Somebody promises he will do this and this for you. The moment you want to release the money, some demons come in between and boom, you miscarry. And you find yourself, I have nothing. Somebody say, I will marry you. He comes, he starts, say, oh, 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 and from nowhere, he disappears. That is not God. It's not God. Luke 131 is a rema word for somebody in our midst today. Underline it, confess it, declare it, I shall conceive and I will give birth. I shall conceive and I will give birth. Abba. Now, the, 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 I don't know what this. The devil could not stop Jesus. Because the angel said only, I shall conceive and I will give birth. <laughs> I'm giving birth to my dream. My dream has always been to preach the way I'm preaching. That was my dream. The devil wanted to stop my dream. He failed. And I want to declare over you, you will live your dream. Amen. I say you will live your dream. I say to you, you will live your dream. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to the world. And you shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. He shall be great. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Jesus was born king. Aunt, you are, you are not getting me, oh. <laughs> Jesus was born in a manger, but he was born king. Now, it doesn't matter where you are born. What matters is who you are inside. You can be born in a slum. But you have the kingdom in you. Don't mind where you are. Mind who you are. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Agnes, come with me. Agnes, don't mind where you are. Mind who you are. Amen. Don't mind where you are. It's not about who you, where you are. It's about who you are. Because you can be in Europe. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Who I am is what matters. I can make Europe where I am here. Where I am is doesn't matter. You can make your house a paradise, even if you are situated where. It is not about where you are. It's about who you are. You know, people like blaming their environment. 
Nobody help me. Nobody does it for me. I ask you what? No, 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 no. If you have the spirit of excellence, wherever you are, the reflection of so it's about who you are. Not people are in America, but they are they are miserable. They rather come back to Kenya or to Congo or Sochi in Africa. Don't think that you will succeed because you are in, in Dubai. No, no. Dubai will never make you succeed in life. It is who you are that will make you succeed in life. Because if you have a, 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 a mediocrity mentality, even if I give you one million now, believe me, it will finish the same day. It's not about where you are. It's about who you are. Jesus was born in a manger, but he was a king. He was born in a manger, but he was a king. Go to verse 33. Let me read for you. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Now, listen to this, verse 34. Then Mary, Mary said, How? I know somebody who is listening to me is asking you the question. How shall this be? See, I know not a man. How shall this be? How? 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 <laughs> how shall this be? Now listen to the, 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 the angel. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and overshadow thee by the power of the of the highest therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of god and behold thy cousin elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren? Who was called barren? Abba. Elizabeth was called barren. But the angel says, Agnes, listen to me. The angel says she's pregnant. She's pregnant. Now, listen to me. Agnes, are you listening to me? The names people call you with, even God knows them. They call you beggar. God knows that name. They call you barren. I, think I never knew that even God is aware. God is aware. They called her barren, but she is pregnant now. Ah, today it's all about pregnancy. Oh. Mm. Mm. Today is about pregnancy, 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 pregnancy. She was called barren, but her, her, at her old age, she conceived a son. My friend, it is not yet late for you. It is not late for you. I say it is not late for you. God is still on the throne. Amen. It is not late for you. Listen to this. The Bible says in verse 36, Verse 37, for with God, 
nothing shall be impossible. I want to let you know, my friend, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Verse 38, And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. According to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, I would like to let you know that is where the pregnancy started. The pregnancy started in the body of Mary when she received the word. Let it be unto me according to thy word. <sighs> Let me start the teaching. I've not yet started. I'm starting now. Who are the targets of today's message? Who am I targeting today? Now, if you are not in those points, so this message may, might not help you. So, because every message has the people I'm addressing. The first category of the people who I am targeting is those who are discouraged, those who are helpless, those who are hopeless, those who think that God has forgotten them. That is the first category of people that I'm targeting in the, in the message today. Now, I would like to let you know if you are in that category I have three messages for you the first message for you is that God knows exactly where you are located that is the first message for you if you are in that category in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 the Bible says that the angel was sent unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth meaning that the angel knew her location <coughs> I would like you to know first of all God knows exactly where you are located don't think that you were, even if you are in a slum or you are in a whatever VIP, whatever, God knows where you are. Even if no one knows your address, I would like you to know God knows where you are. Amen. And where you are is where God will visit you where you are. Number two. God knows your name. God knows your name. And you will be shocked, maybe I will tell you that God knows your marital status. In Luke chapter 1 verse 27, the Bible said that the angel was sent to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Abba. So God was so specific and of the house of David, so even the tribe of that man was known. And the virgin's name was Mary. So God knows your name. So don't be bothered that the people don't know me. God knows your name. Say with me, God knows my name. God knows. Mumu anajua jina la eh? langu. Eh? Eh? Mungu anajua 
jina langu naitwa kasuku mungu anajua jina langu kama mungu <laughs> mungu anajua jina lako lako wewe yes. wewe we. mungu even if somebody deletes your name in his phone god knows your name <laughs> Number three. Number three. Take note of this. Number three. The third message for the first category of the people, I would like to let you know that God will visit you. Amen. God will visit you. He knows your place. He knows where you are. He knows your name. He knows who you are living with. He, he, he knows even your educational level. He knows your diploma. He knows everything. And now he will visit you. The Bible says in Luke 1 28, the Bible says that the angel came in unto her. Meaning that the angel came where she was in her house at her place. I don't know which place it was, but one thing I know that Mary was very poor. But despite her poverty, the angel came to visit her. That is a good news for you that God will visit you. Amen. Agnes, listen to me. God came to visit Elizabeth first, the same angel, the same angel who came to visit Mary is the same angel who visited Elizabeth. Now, what we are reading here today with Mary happened six months later after Elizabeth. Elizabeth conceived six months later. Mary conceived the same angel who visited Elizabeth is the same angel who came to visit me. I would like you to know what God does in my life. He will do also in your life. Amen. 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 <laughs> Whatever you see God doing in somebody's life, Amen. I would like you to know I am next in line. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to declare over somebody under the sound of my voice, you are next in line. Say with me, I am next in line. Say next. with me, I am next in line. Next. The same God who visited that family will also visit you. Amen. The same God who gave children to that woman will give you children. The same God who gives Abba. The same God who gives a job will give you a job. Say with me, I am next in line. I am next in line. Ah, uh, you are not saying as I wish you to say. Say with me, I am I next, next in line. Next in line for a miracle, I am next in line for my marriage, I am next in line for my my conception. Abba, the same angel who visit a Hebrew Shalabazano, the same angel who visited Elizabeth came to visit Abba. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you will have the same visitation. Amen. I say you will have the same visitation. Listen to me carefully, my friend. God is not respecter of persons. What he does for one, he will do for other. What he does for one, he will do for others. What he does for, for one, he will do for others. If God is giving happiness in marriage, he will give happiness to you. Amen. He is not respect of persons. Hold on! Hallelujah! Hold on! You are next in line. From now until six months. Listen to me. I'm prophesying over somebody. 
from now until the next six months, somebody will testify. Something big will happen in your life. Take note of today. You know, when I teach, I prophesy, and what I prophesy come to pass from May, add six months, at the end of the year, before the year is over, somebody will be visited dramatically. I say somebody will be visited dramatically. The God I serve, say to me, tell somebody, count from now until six months. Be careful because some stuff will happen in your life from now until six months. People will wonder, is it the same person? God will visit you. And I know you are next in line for a dramatic turnaround. Amen. So that is the first category of people. Now, somebody might not be there. Maybe you are in the second category. The second category of people I'm targeting in today's message is those who serve God, but it looks like serving God is in vain. That is the second category of people. You are serving God. But it looks like you are serving God in vain. I know somebody who is watching me today. You are asking yourself questions about serving God. You are asking yourself, I'm serving God, but my life is not moving forward. I'm serving God, my, but, but my staff are still stuck. I'm serving God, but things it seems like it is not adding up well. Now, today's message is for you. Now, Luke chapter 1, verse 38. The Bible says, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Mary knew she was a servant of God. Mary knew she was a servant of God. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I am a servant of the Lord. Now, Agnes, you better know that Mary was very poor. Mary was poor. Joseph took time to pay the dowry. So God did that. So God, God took advantage of her poverty to make her pregnant. So in the meantime, he'll be waiting to get some money to pay the dowry. <laughs> for you. Now, I have two messages here in that category. Number one, there is no better compliment from heaven than to be called servant of God. Hallelujah. There is no better compliment from heaven than to be called a servant of God. Now, take note of this. All of the people of faith, you know, in the Bible, they were called servants of God. Hallelujah. So, I mean, so that is the compliment of God to call you servant. Don't look at at here, don't have money. No, you are a servant. Don't look at her, I am not married. You are a servant of God. Don't look at it. I mean, things are not working. 
you want from me. You are a servant of God. You are a servant. Now, let me give you some scriptures and maybe it will help you. I don't know, but I, I, I believe it will help you. Now, Abraham was called a servant of God. Genesis 26, verse 24. Isaac was called a servant of God. Genesis 24, verse 14. Jacob was called a servant of God. Isaiah 41, verse 8. Moses was called a servant of God. Revelation 15, verse 3. Revelation 15, verse 3. David was called a servant of God. Psalm 89, verse 20. Daniel was a servant of God. Daniel chapter 6, verse 20. Job was called a servant of God. Job chapter 1, verse 8. Paul, servant of God. Romans 1, 11. Mary, servant of God. Luke 1, 38. Now, in the day of judgment, God will reward us as servants of God. Now, he will say in Matthew 25, verse 21, faithful servant, faithful servant, come and enter in the joy of your master. Hallelujah. So I want to announce to you, you are a servant of God. You are a servant of God. Don't, I mean, don't make the devil will destroy you. Now, the second thing I would like to take note of is that there is no greater privilege and reward there is no greater privilege and reward than from serving God. There is no greater privilege and reward than of serving God. There is no greater privilege Agnes, are you getting me? There is no greater privilege than, I mean, no greater reward than, Abba. you see, you see, you see, you see, the, the job where you are working, they are cutting your salary into two. But in the kingdom of God, there is no cutting of salary. No. No. The reward of God is greater than your salary. Don't live by your salary. Re live by the reward of serving God. Now, I would like to give you four benefits of serving God. Live by your reward from God, not by your salary. Because your salary can be cut anytime. But nobody can cut your reward. Your reward is greater than your salary. Now, let me give you four benefits of serving God. Now, we are getting those benefits from the story of Mary. Number one. Number one. God honors those who serve him. Take note of that. Agnes, are you reading everything? God honors those who serve him. Amen. There is no shame, no reproach, no embarrassment when you serve God. Now, I want to declare over you no more reproach in your life. Amen. No more embarrassment in your life. Amen. No more shame. Amen. Take note of that. Ah, I cannot serve God and suffer shame. No, it cannot happen. If I'm serving God, God will honor me. I would like to let you know God will honor you. 
Now, read with me. John 12, 26. Job, John 12, 20, 26. The Bible says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And when I am there, shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. That is where the name of my 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 firstborn honor comes from. I told God I suffered shame. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the shame of Abba? Now I want to declare over somebody: you will never suffer shame again in your life. You will even in that COVID-19 word of life wherever you are, I declare as your pastor, as your father, none of you will suffer shame. None of you will suffer shame. None of your house will be locked because you are not able to pay the rent. Nobody under the sound of my voice because you are serving God, you will not suffer shame. You will not suffer shame for your children. You will not suffer shame for your marriage. You will not suffer shame for your business. You will not suffer shame of any kind because you are the servant of God. When you serve God, God will exempt you from shame. Now, there is something I would like to show you from the life of Mary. I hope it will help you. God will honor you. Now, listen to this. I am still in the first point where I say if you serve God, God will honor you. Now, watch this. Luke chapter 1 verse 28. The, the, the angel came. I didn't see here. The angel came and said, Hell. You say what? Hell. Now, uh, uh, you, I know people say, oh, hell, Mary, hell, Mary. Do, do, do you know why Mary was troubled when she had hell? Why was she troubled? Now, Agnes, when you read hell, hell, hell was a way of greeting personalities. Only kings or nobles or royal people were greeted hell. That's why you see in John 19 verse 3 when the people were persecuting Jesus they said, hell, king of Jews. So hell was a greeting for king. A greeting, a, 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 a greeting for personalities. Mary was troubled. She looked at herself. I am poor. I don't have money. How do you not greet me? Like you are greeting a queen. Like you are greeting a king. So they can just say, no, don't worry, don't worry. You are a servant of God. You are over you, you are a king, you are a queen. So behave yourself like a servant of God. That is why you know what? I behave myself like a king who never begs and will never beg anyway. I mean, because when you serve God, God will honor you. Your season of honor has finally come. Ah, ah, you are not getting what I'm talking about. The place where you have been dishonored. Listen to me. Listen to me. The place where you have been dishonored. At the same place, you will be honored. The same place, not elsewhere, 
just there. Oh, yeah. Where you have been this whole night, the same place God will honor you. The boss who humiliated you, the same boss will honor you. The same family. Ah. You are not getting what I'm talking about. God is the God of honor. God is the God who honors his people. Praise be the living God. The same people who humiliated you, the same people will honor you. The same place where you have been. Receive your honor now in Jesus' name. Okay. I say your season of honor has come. <laughs> Receive your season of honor. Receive. Number two. The second benefit of serving. God highly favors those who serve him. God highly favors those who serve him. If you want to enjoy favor, serve God. You are taking COVID-19 as an excuse of not serving. Luke 1, 28. Thou art highly favored. Thou art highly favored. That is what the angel said to Mary. Now, what does it mean to be highly favored? To be highly favored means to become an exception to the law. To be highly favored means to become an exception to the law and to enjoy a special treatment. Hallelujah! When the angel told Mary, you are highly favored, it means you are an exception to the law and you will enjoy a special treatment. And you know, Mary became pregnant against the law of reproduction. That is the, the meaning of to be highly favored. So what your family members go through, you will be exempted in Jesus' name. Amen. You will be the exception to the law of your family. I declare over you, receive that grace. Where you will be highly favored, you will enjoy a special treatment. Because you are serving God. Hallelujah. Agnes, Agnes, are you listening to me? Yeah. You will not suffer what others are suffering. Because when you serve God, you become an exception to the law. What others? Amen. You become an exception to the law. I see somebody enjoying special treatment. Why? Because you are serving God. The Holy Spirit came and told her, you, your, your, your marriage will be an exception. Agnes, una see here. Your marriage, your marriage will be an exception to the law. Because you serve God. Amen. Number three. Serving God secures giving presents, different presents. Serving God secures divine presence. When you serve God, you will secure divine presence. Serving God secures divine presence. The angel told her, the Lord is with you. Because you are serving God, the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, my friend, I've never lived under fear of anything. Because I know I'm serving God, the Lord is with me. Number four, the fourth benefit. Serving God entitles you to divine blessing. Ah, serving God entitles you to divine blessing. The angel said to Mary, bless 
Blessed are thou among women. Listen to me. If you serve God, you don't need to pray to be blessed. Those who serve God don't need to pray to be blessed. Because serving God by itself releases blessing on you. Now, you know that. Let me read for you. Exodus 23, verse 25 to 26. The Bible says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless your bread and your water. I will take away sickness away from you. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of your days I will fulfill. So, according to the scripture we have read, Number one, when you serve God, he will bless your water and your bread. It means, in other words, if you serve God, you will never suffer lack and want. Number two, when you serve the Lord, he will take away sickness from you. When the pastor says that I will never be sick, please understand what I mean. I mean... Because I serve God, I will never be sick. And I declare that for years, I mean. Because I'm serving God. And God says, meaning number three, when you serve God, you will not suffer miscarriage. When you serve God, there will be no barrenness. When you serve God, you will live long. You will live long. Longevity is included in serving God. Please, don't ever think that when you are serving God, you are making a favor to Pastor Kasuku. No, no, no. It is for your own benefit. I pray for somebody to receive the grace of being a servant of God. Joshua said, me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Now, I want to close. The third category, the third category of those I am targeting in my message today is those who have a prophecy from God. Those who have a promise from God. Now, if you are in that category, I would like to let you know the prophetic word or the prophecy that God has released upon your life will be fulfilled only if you learn to surrender. Hello? The prophetic word that God has released upon your life will be fulfilled only if you learn to surrender. Without surrendering, there will be no fulfillment of the prophecy. Luke 1 38. And Mary said, Behold, I am your servant. Be it unto me according to your word. Behold, I am your servant. Be it to me 
according to your word. So that is to surrender. Now, what does it mean to surrender? Let me give you three, and we are closing. To surrender means, number one, take notes. Stop fighting God. Stop fighting. Start singing. I say yes. Yes. Do you know why you have a problem? <laughs> Your problem is to say yes to the, to the will of God. That's why even you are stuck. God has released the word for you. What he is expecting from you is to say yes. Why are you fighting? What the angel came to tell Mary was out of human mind. But she said, I am your servant. I say yes. Let it be. Even if it goes contrary to my mind, I say yes. I want somebody today. God will release power on you. The surrender. You just surrender. You say, Lord, I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. When God told me, Kasuku, leave your country, go to Kenya, a lot of questions was in my mind. But when I say yes, God released the prophecy that is spoke concerning my life. I want to tell somebody, today is your day to say yes to Lord. God said to you something. You are still resisting. You are still fighting the will of God. You are still fighting with between your flesh, your mind, and what people will say. Uh, you, you know, it about you people, my friend, my Kenyan people, you are in your comfort zone. Kenya is not a comfort zone for me. I'm a foreigner. I left my job. I was working well, I was earning money, I was living my life, but God said, stop, go to Kenya. How? How, God? I, I, I mean, but I came to a moment where I said, I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes. May you receive grace to say yes to the Lord today. Amen. Even if it does not make sense, ah, it doesn't matter. I say yes to your will. Look where I am. Look where I am. God is with me. God is blessing me. Agnes, I don't suffer in this country. I have people who love me. Those who are online here, they love me like they are people. I love them back. I found a family. I found people I love. But when I was at home, there was a kind of fear. Now listen to me. Do you know why you are struggling to say yes? Because you are afraid. I cast the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. What people will say. You know what I mean? I had the same fear before I leave Congo. Honey, can you imagine? You leave your country to come in a foreign country and you have no job. You have no job. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Today, you know, Agnes, God is telling me, somebody today, as you are watching me, there is a bad thing that is being lifted. Somebody's burden is lifted. You are struggling to say yes or to say no or to continue or to stop. You are still fighting. But today, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is teaching you, my friend, even if it does not make sense, say yes to the Lord. Trust him. He will hold you back. Even if you don't understand, say yes to the Lord. Agnes, 
You know the problem people have. God told you, take that money and give. You say, ah, how can I give? In the midst of COVID-19, ah, I can't give up, I can't give up. My friend, my friend, if you struggle to say yes to the Lord, you will struggle to get the blessing from the Lord. Let me sing for us when I finish the sermon. Nasimandio, Dio, Dio. I say yes, yes, yes. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. Ah, oh, my friend, you know what? Anytime I hear the voice of God, even if it makes it does not make sense for me, I say yes, God. Go ahead. You are my God. I trust you. I say yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why I'm living a stress-free life. Because all the time I have learned to stop fighting with God. Are you getting me out of life? God say forgive. Ah, 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 ah. Go say, release that person. Oh, 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 oh. You know, do, do, do. go say, release that person. Let her go. Oh, oh. What, 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 what? What if? What if? What if? What if? That's why you are struggling. That's why you are stuck. You cannot say, you know, take, 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 take. You cannot say yes to the Lord and be stuck. You are stuck because you are struggling to say yes. I say yes, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes. Yes. Good, good. I say yes. Come, come. Come, come, come here. I'm talking from the authority of the, of the pulpit. I say yes. My soul say yes. Say yes. Come, 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 come. Say yes. They don't say yes. My soul say yes. Whatever you are, sing, sing, sing with me. Say yes.
God wants to use you. Say yes to God. I don't care what I'm going through. It is a matter of saying yes. My friend, the prophecy of God will be fulfilled if you learn to say yes. You drop all your mind. My mind. I'm struggling. No, I cannot do that. My friend, I pray from now. The last time you say no is the last forever. I say yes. I left Congo. I came in Kenya because I say yes to the will of God. And I want to declare over somebody you will go places as you learn to say yes. Mary, you know, I love Mary. I love this woman, Mary. I love this woman, Mary. She has taught me to say yes to the Lord. Even if it will cost me, I say yes. There was a moment, Agnes. God told me, ah, Kasu could take all the money from the bank account and put it in my work. I say yes, Lord. I went to my bank. I took everything I gave to the Lord. Why are you struggling to give even a no ring of 20 shillings? Because your heart is hard. You struggle to say yes to the Lord. You are using your mind. Your brain is struggling. If I give, how will it happen? My friend, learn to say yes. That is the meaning of surrendering. Hallelujah. Surrendering. Number two. What does it mean? I'm so excited. Today's teaching is so exciting. To surrender means what? To surrender means Agnes Ikea. I'm teaching you, you, you. You are the one I'm teaching to. To surrender means stop asking God how it will happen. To surrender means stop asking God how it will happen. Start confessing my faith that it will happen. Amen. Oh, ha, ha. Oh, that's amazing. To surrender means I reach a place where I don't need to ask God how will it happen. I start confessing it will happen. The Abba, by faith, start confessing that it will happen. Rhoda, Rhoda, your way to America is open. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how. I'm declaring. I don't know how. Please, can you stop asking how? Start confessing it will happen. I don't know how. I know Kasuku will be on top here in this world. I told you the world of life will be a leading church in the world. Don't ask me how. I know it will happen. Agnes, you you, you thinking to congregations all over the world because you sacrifice yourself to come to serve the Lord in the midst of the COVID, in the midst of the lockdown, I prophesy over you today as a father to you in the name of Jesus, there will be no lockdown in your life. Everything that the devil has locked down in your life is unlocked today in the name of Jesus Christ. There will be no lockdown in your life, Agnes, because you say yes to the Lord. I don't know how I will be blessed, but I know one thing I will be blessed. I don't know how God will open those for me, but I declare that the doors will be opened. I don't know how I will conceive, but I know, I confess, I declare it will happen. I don't, don't ask me how it will happen. I declare over you, you will be settled. Don't ask me how. Declare I'll be settled. Ah, you will build houses in this country of Kenya, in the midst of the famine. Somebody will be blessed ah, beyond measure. Don't ask me how. Declare it will happen. God will give you children. Don't ask me how. Declare I will have children. You know your problem is you are struggling with how. I don't know how. Oh, hallelujah. When I was 
listening to God, telling me you should come to Kenya. I didn't know how I will come, but I knew I will come to Kenya. Oh, hallelujah. Rima Shankantori, brother. Rebecca Besharama. Start confessing now. Oh, wherever you are, start confessing. I don't know how, but I know it will happen. Stop asking God how. Oh, hallelujah. Whatever God told you, do not ask God how. You declare it will happen. You declare it will happen. Declare it will happen. I don't know how, but I know it will happen. God will open doors. I don't know. Oh, oh hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. My friend, go ahead and pray. Declare the word of the Lord. God said he will do. I don't know how, but I know he will do. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody is asking how. Somebody is asking how. Somebody is asking how. But the Lord is telling you today it will happen. It shall come to pass. Oh, 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 oh hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Riva Shakanada. Robo Shenadaka. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I don't know how, but I know I will be the head. I will not be the tail. I don't know how, but I know if God says so, it shall happen. I don't know how, but I know it shall happen. I don't know how. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Wherever you are, start declaring. Start declaring the prophecy that God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, I never knew, I never knew how I will come in Kenya. Oh Agnes, I didn't know, but God knew how I will reach here. From the church where I came from, one point something million was released for me to come in Kenya. Fully paid, plane paid, air ticket play paid, the rent paid, the school fees paid, everything paid. I didn't know how. Here I am. You will go places. I say 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 you will go places. I don't know how, but I know one thing. You will go places. God will restore you. I don't know how, but it will happen. You will get a blessing. I don't know how, but I know one thing. It shall happen. That is the biggest lesson I learned from Mary. Mary, how? The Holy Spirit. What is the meaning of surrendering? You know, Mary said, All generations shall call me blessed. Why? Because she learned to surrender. Why? Because she learned to stop asking how. When God says something, Agnes, when God speaks to you, don't ask God how. Just say, Yes, Lord, you do it. You know me, oh. you do it. I stopped asking God how. I receive the word. I enjoy my peace. I let God be God. The last thing, what is to surrender? To surrender means stop seeing how humanly impossible it looks. To surrender means stop seeing how humanly impossible it looks. Start looking how divinely possible it is. Ha. To surrender means to stop seeing how humanly impossible it is. And start looking how divinely possible it is. Agnes, do you know what? Humanly speaking, it was impossible for Mary to conceive without a man. My friend, what God told you, 
If you can do it, believe me, it is not God. Eh? Eh? If God tells you something and you feel like you can do it, that is not God. Eh? I repeat. Let me repeat. If God is for you, it is God who speaks to you. And you, 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 you feel like you can do it. That cannot be God. Because if God speaks to you, the first thing you look at yourself, it is impossible. I want to let you know as I'm closing here. The Bible says, Luke 1 37, nothing shall be impossible with God. You are struggling in your heart because you are looking at how, humanly speaking, it can happen. Now, if I look at my life, you, humanly speaking, I cannot be a pastor. How? I, I am not qualified. That is why God says, you have found favor favor of God will make the impossible possible. The favor of God is upon you. That is why the impossible can become possible. I want to let you know today nothing. You have a prophecy from God? You have a promise from God? Stop looking at your pockets. When God releases a word for you, he does not look at your bank account. Lift your eyes on God. Because what God says with his mouth, only his hand can fulfill. What God says with his mouth, only his hand can fulfill. Nothing shall be impossible Only his hand. can fulfill with God. I want to welcome you to the realm of impossible becoming possible. Your marriage is possible. Your breakthrough is possible. It can be impossible in the eyes of men, but in the eyes of God, it is possible. Amen. I stop here. Today's message is for you. Say yes to the Lord. Like Mary did. Number two. Remove the how. Remove the how. Number three. Believe the impossible. Now, wherever you are, let us stand on our feet and act like we sing for us a song. Not for us, sing to the Lord, not sing for us, no. We sing to the Lord a song. And I want you to sing this song with anointing, with faith. I gave you three keys to live new things. If you want to live new things, number one, I no, 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 don't need to take notes. Number one, I'm giving you the example of Mary. Say yes to the Lord. Number two, remove the how from your mind. Number three, believe the impossible. The doctor said it's impossible. Believe it is possible. Your uncle said it's impossible. The nation said it's impossible. The father said it's impossible. The mother said it's impossible. Your husband said it's impossible. Your, 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 your environment said it's impossible. Believe it's possible. We go before the Lord. I want you to cry to God. Lord, what you did to Mary, I am next in line. What was impossible will become possible in my life. The God of Mary, may you become my God. Now, you know the theme of today? The God of Mary. The God of Mary is like I'm starting as the teaching now. 
God of Mary, show yourself. Make the impossible possible in my life. God of Mary, I say yes to you today. God of Mary, visit me. Visit me with what eyes have not seen. What ears one has ever thought about. Agnes. service. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.
we are, wherever you are, help me praise the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, help me to cry for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Praise be to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God of Mary is visiting you. The God of Mary is visiting you today. The way he visited Mary is the way he will visit you today. Doors will be open for you. I don't know how, but God will open doors for you. You are blessed of the Lord. You will succeed. I don't know how, but I know one thing. The God of Mary will make the impossible possible in your life. Pray and pray. Declare and declare. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. I say yes to your will. I say yes. I say yes. Even if it looks impossible. But I know. I know. Oh, glory to God. Pray and pray. 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 All things are possible for those who believe. I will be the head. I will not be the tail. I will succeed. It will work. I believe. Oh, hallelujah. I say yes to your will. 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 Even if it does not make sense to me, I say yes to your will. Even if it does not make sense, I say yes. 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 I don't have money, but I say yes. I don't have a husband, but I say yes. I don't have a wife, but I say yes. I don't have a job, but I say yes. I have nobody, but I say yes. Because you are the one who will do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. May the Lord who has called me Touch each one of you wherever you are in Jesus' name. The God who visited Mary, may he visit you finally in the name of Jesus. You are struggling to say yes. Receive the grace to say yes finally today. You who are looking around, Things look impossible. Receive faith for the impossible to become possible in your life. I bless you wherever you are for new things. I bless word of life wherever you are for those who have given their tithe or their offering wherever you are. I bless you to be a servant of God. The way Mary said, I am your servant. Receive the grace to serve God. My friend, receive the grace to serve God. The reason why God is blessing me, it is to serve him. If it is not to serve him, I don't deserve any blessing. God has given you the car to serve him. God has given you the job to serve him. God has given you the marriage for your marriage to serve him. Not for eating chapati and kelugali. It is to serve God. Receive the grace to serve God. Receive the grace to serve God today. I bless your week. I bless your family. I bless the work of your hand. I bless your family. I bless your wife, your children, your husband. I bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Succeed in your business. Go ahead. Next Sunday, come with a testimony. Anytime God gives you a testimony, send it to me. We share with others to the glory of God. You are blessed in Jesus' precious and glorious name. We say, Amen. Amen. We clap for the Lord because it is done. Hallelujah.
In Jesus' name, we have prayed and we say, Amen. Amen. Now we go to close our service. The year 2020, year of manifested glory. The Lord shall arise on me, and his glory shall be seen on me. In Jesus' name, amen. We tell, we tell your neighbor, year 2020, the year of manifested glory. The Lord shall arise on you, and his glory shall be seen on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Well, the end of the service. God bless you. You will have a testimony this week. And see you on Wednesday for the midweek of the study. Friday for Friday Peniel, I'm serving God 24-7. 24-7, my friend, without being tired. God renews my strength every day because I know there is a benefit in serving God. Receive the same grace to serve God tirelessly. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, blessed be to you all. You know I love you. Thank you. Next week, tomorrow, Monday, devotion on in the morning. God bless you. Thank you. In Jesus' name.